What's up? It's your host, Tori, and who is ready to be petty? Wow, if you are back for part two of episode 56, you are a true RTBP fan, and I thank you for your service. Before we get into today's episode, I just want to add a few the circle thoughts. I always just want to say circle, putting that in front of it sounds like weird sometimes, but like you also like can't. I don't know. Anyways, I just wanted to add some thoughts that I had watching episodes five to eight. So the first thing is that I'm still having a really good time. The show is still really fun. I wish you could have seen how my jaw dropped when Mitchell entered the circle because I had mentioned like offhand Tammy and Ed from season one in part one of this this episode. And I honestly think, well, I'm going to take full credit, but I honestly think that that was some type of like psychic shit that I was on and even though I hated Tammy and Ed like with a fiery passion that burned deep into my soul Mitchell is like funny and I think he has more of the social skills that will get him further along in this game that is all I will say about Mitchell I also really like Kat she's great casting she seems really fun and Courtney as a joker was just pure entertainment and then again spoiler alert Lance is so boring and Emily is so fun and I'm really excited to see them play together as this new person I can't remember what the new person's name is I think that Emily was so Jack I guess was such a good player I think he had some strategic chops that we didn't really get to see because of the makeup challenge like throwing him off his game but it's kind of like Also, you should like learn makeup brands like in my girl chats with my friends. We talk about like skincare and makeup and beauty and stuff all the time. So I feel like that's something he should have prepared for. Like I said on the last episode, I feel like you almost have to play into those traditional gender roles because you can just see everyone saw Emily's mannequin and was like a 21 year old sorority girl did not apply that makeup. So I feel like if you're preparing to be a catfish, think about what others would expect you to do and like learn about what those things are so you can perform them really well. Because gender is truly just a performance. Anyways, that's a side tangent for another day. But we see it with Trevor. Like he learned some facts about sports teams and that played really well for him in like different combos that he's had this season. I really have been enjoying Jack and you can tell that Netflix does too because all of their social media is is just hyping him up. But I will say, even though I think it is smart, strategically again to play like the stereotypical gender roles it is annoying and I think I talked about this a little bit in the last podcast that like people choose young women as catfishes and like play kind of like a easygoing nice quote-unquote girl to be not strategic like I literally said I would do that (laughs) in the last episode but it's like I've paid my dues I think that it's smart strategically because that's what other people are thinking but like it is annoying that there's that like stereotype that those type of people are less strategic so again I'm saying it's the smart move and I would definitely do it too but like it's annoying that it has to come down to that and I hope that one day we can reevaluate and re kind of imagine what strategy in these social strategic games looks like and maybe have some more like non-traditional ways to look at it outside of like the typical dominant male figure but y'all that's another conversation for another time Anyways, I'm so happy they aren't adding new players so late into the game coming into this last set of episodes. I also want to lock in my winner pick. It is Chloe. 
I think she's had an amazing edit and I think she strikes the perfect balance of being super social, super trusting, super fun, but also like a titch, a teach strategic when it comes to making alliances, her main one being the Kardashians with Courtney and River. I think though, I'd be happy with a Chloe win. I think though, My main person who I'm rooting for is Courtney. Um, He was down really low this week in the rankings, which was really surprising to me. But I think he's played such a fun dynamic game. And I think he did play the Joker part really well. And I think it's a little bit less likely than a Chloe win, but I would be so happy if he won. Maybe this new old person can win. I think that it's kind of... A disadvantage that they're coming in at this time because it seems like in these seasons a lot of the early people stick around for a long time and he's also the only older person but I think Jack has the strategy so maybe him and I was gonna say Lance maybe him and Lisa can do really well together. I also kind of feel bad for him because really, I think if he played himself, he could have won or gone really, really far. And I wonder if some of these people that go on the show, like Lisa, for example, if the production is like, you have to be a catfish or you're not like getting cast and then you just like are forced to play this role, even if you know you have a tougher chance of winning the money in the end. Anyways, back to today's episode. If you didn't listen to part one, just a quick summary. Nick and I recorded like a two hour podcast. We indulged in some bevies and the first hour, honestly, compared to this one was like succinct. This one is like truly unhinged. A lot more of me wheezing, a lot more seal laughs. (laughs) Like there's this part that Nick is talking about lactose intolerant people, but like I fully can't breathe and it's just like me wheezing like just audio and like trust me, it's not cute. (laughs) I really feel like during quarantine, I've picked up like wheezing, laughing and snorting (laughs) when I laugh and I'm really hoping that people still like me when I like reemerge into society like a debutante in Regency London (laughs) when the pandemic is over. I'll also give you a heads up, like in part one, there are a few audio issues, but I know you aren't here for good audio at this point. Sometimes it sounds like Nick is like playing with a chocolate wrapper (laughs) in front of his microphone. And know what? Like your girl isn't a fucking audio engineer over here. So we're doing the best that we can. Anyways, here's part two of my conversation with Nick. So there's a few other things we wanted to talk about other than... There were a few things we threw on our agenda (laughs) that we're here for, that we... The agenda that we didn't follow. (laughs) Like, to any point, I don't think. I think, like, the thing with this, though, that, like, the listeners will like is because I feel like a lot of times I talk about celebrity drama and stuff like that, but I feel like in the old days of RTBP, I talked a lot about of just, like, petty IRL things. So... I'm hoping that people like resonate with this. They should. And I wish that there was an opportunity for me to spread more petty IRL stuff. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I agree. It's tough, though, when you're like a working professional or like have nothing <laughs> have nothing going on uh, due to COVID. But there's still some sh- things that I want to talk about. So like one is my seasonal allergies. Do people... <laughs> Do people want to hear about this? No. Do I? I'll be the viewers. <laughs> yes, Tori. <laughs> yes, Tori. Yeah, yes, Tori. <laughs> Tori, Tori, Tori. <laughs> Literally no one outside of my mother who is watching this, um, she's a dedicated RTVP fan, wants to hear about my seasonal allergies. Here's the facts. I have crippling seasonal depression. Like, it's like, it is debilitating. Is that an allergy? No, no. (laughs) Nick, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's a, this is going to be like wordplay. I have debilitating seasonal affective disorder. 
or yeah, sad. I have the sads 24 seven. For those of you who don't know, I basically live in the Pacific Northwest. Like I basically live in Forks, Washington. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and you know why the Cullen family lived in Forks, Washington is because it rained. Who are the Cullen family? <laughs> Just wait, what? Or, like Edward Cullen? Yes, that get with the program. <laughs> <laughs> Like, this is a seamless analogy, and you are just dropping the ball. Like, this is is fucking clear as day, almost, like, scientific, and you just, like, fumbled. Wait, okay, so Edward Cullen and Bella Cullen. Yeah, they live in Forks to hide as vampires because it rains all the time, and I basically live in, like, the same city. Yeah, so anyways, I'm depressed a lot of the time in the place that I live which is ironic because it's actually the warmest place in Canada so do what you may with that information Tori is not meant to be a Canadian breaking news honestly I was born to like live in the Mediterranean I don't I have no idea how the fuck I got here (laughs) anyways I also have debilitating seasonal allergies so as soon as the sun comes out and I'm like I'm happy to be alive (laughs) for the first time yeah. this year I like don't want to go outside and I this whole weekend I went outside and I am just I am paying the consequences the yeah I'm paying the price for that and I just wanted to like put that out there maybe you're also struggling I basically sound like I have COVID <laughs> because I have like a slight runny nose so I'm a little nasally I don't know if you can tell from like these acoustics <laughs> up in here now their ears have adjusted at this point <laughs> yeah. okay, everybody clear your ears <laughs> and then listen to Tori's nasally voice ready go hi yeah yeah Ooh. oh no this Ariana Grande moment <laughs> I wish you could see Tori on the microphone Tori now has like a holding mic like a performance mic it's not like a table stand mic and she literally just grabbed the mic and did that thing with her finger in the air. Like she was chasing like the high note as she like wobbled her head back and forth. <laughs> like trying to go like, aye, aye, aye. as if she was like the lead singer on the Zoe 101 theme song. <laughs> chasing the high note or hitting the high note? My silence speaks volumes. <laughs> and then like I also have like a slight cough because of like my throat's just like irritated from all the pollen and so I literally don't want to go anywhere where there's people because I just sound like I have COVID so I played that game too my seasonal allergies aren't like terrible although like I will get like a stuffy nose or like a slightly runny nose but a few weeks ago like it was like beautiful out and I went on a hike and like later on that day my throat started hurting and I was like oh no the world's coming to an end and at like this point i was like i had my first shot and i was like okay i'm like 70 percent vaccinated at this point like i probably don't have covid in my throat right now and i was like oh, blah, 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 blah. so it was nerve-wracking but i have not experienced like the debilitating like get me a zyrtec right now type of allergies mm, i am right there i went to the pharmacy right before we um recorded this and i was like on the side of the road doing my nasal spray like i <laughs> was doing intravenous drugs like I'll probably cut that out but I was like huddled over in the corner behind the grocery store and let me get the the tea pot nose petal <laughs> yeah. let me do my neti pot <laughs> like neti. on the side of the road that is currently me I just also find like allergies have a bad rep because it's like I'm struggling but I'm still like functioning Mm -hmm. and so I feel bad like I don't know I feel like it's a cop-out for things I hate when people are like don't worry about me it's allergies like you want me to trust you I I think it's also just like a really good excuse to get out of things so maybe that's why people don't believe me (laughs) yes actually that is definitely what it is because I would always hate when people be like "Mm, I'm not like feeling well today allergies (laughs) I'm just like tired I want to go to bed early allergies and I'm like that is a lame ass excuse because you know damn well if you wanted to hang out with me enough or you wanted to stay out a little bit later or you wanted to do this activity you would do it with allergies it's almost like people who are like lactose intolerant and they're like eating ice cream anyway and they're like 
I'm going to regret this later, but, like, it's not going to kill me, so I don't care. Like, allergies are the same type of, like, concept as, like, people who are, like, mowing down an entire pint of Ben and Jerry's, knowing they'll, like, hate their life for about four hours and six hours. I have, like, three lactose friends who, pre-COVID, we would do a weekly potluck, and I've never seen three people drink as much milk and eat as much cheese as these three. <laughs> like, milk is- First of all, milk is nasty. I'm going to throw my sister under the bus here for a second. So my sister's been working at home for like, you know, nearly a year now, like the rest of us. Well, not me because it's your life, but most people. And this week she spilled an entire glass of milk on her work laptop and it like immediately crashed. And then she had to go to work to like get like her laptop replaced. And she was mad all week long about this. And I was like, Emily, you spilled a glass of a milk on your laptop like that's fucking nasty like of all things milk like it couldn't have been water it couldn't have been like a margarita <laughs> it couldn't have been lemonade like you spilled one percent milk on your laptop why are you drinking milk in the middle of the day <laughs> like that's her first question you know, you know what she had the nerve to say tori well i was eating grilled cheese as if grilled cheese <laughs> If grilled cheese and Necessitated. milk, are like <laughs> like milk and cookies, or like <laughs> I'm laughing so hard that I honestly might be my pants. <laughs> my family also has this like obsession of like offering milk when we eat like spaghetti. No, with, like... what is with white people doing that? My family <laughs> does the fucking same. Why the fuck would I want a glass of milk with spaghetti? That seems so bad. <laughs> right, and every time. I'm like, it will either be dinner time or like be at my parents like eating dinner. And my dad will be like, anybody want milk? <laughs> and my sister will be like, I will. And I'll be like, you gross ass humans. Like, I actually don't drink when I'm eating. Like, often, like, I don't pair the two, which is probably like an issue for another time we can set aside. Okay. But, like, I'm not drinking a milk with pasta. Like, I'm having one of two things. If I'm having a drink, water yes because that feels natural yes <laughs> or like if i'm feeling like you know it's a night i'll have a glass of red wine with it oh. but the last thing i want with my like jarred pasta sauce <laughs> is a white milk like that is so nasty to me because I, I just think back to like when i was like eight and didn't get to make decisions for myself and i'd have like a glass of milk with my pasta sauce <laughs> And I would sip it, and then I'd put my glass back down, and it would be like a red <laughs> ring of my, like, malt on the rim. <laughs> that is such a specific childhood memory, and I feel like me and everyone else has had that. What the fuck is with that? That is so weird. I don't need to drink a glass of milk to get my, like, dairy protein, like, allowance right? for the day. <laughs> Bitch, I eat so much cheese. <laughs> like, <laughs> and... This is what Tori Nick's fourth podcast and probably the fourth mention of cheese <laughs> in a different type of conversation. One hundred percent. For some reason, when I think of parents making their kids drink milk at dinner, like I really truly only think of spaghetti. Yeah, and it's because it's like, oh, gotta get the calcium in, the strong bones. <laughs> I'm good, girl. I-, I moved out, and the milk I buy now is like almond milk. And how often do I use milk? You ask. How often? With my iced coffee. (laughs) Oh my God, same. I only use milk in my coffees. Like the last time I had a glass of milk would have been in my childhood. It's disgusting. I can't even think of that. To drink milk on its own, like at least you can get like you pouring like a small glass for like chocolate chip cookies if you want to like dunk it. Like, right? Like if you want the experience that like you crave that gives you happiness, like sure. But like milk. Like, that's the hill we're dying on. Honestly, honestly. Yeah, I I love how we got here from lactose people. But, like, it is true. I see it on TikTok all the time. People making fun of lactose people that are just like, just get ready for me. Like, I'm just going to do this anyways. Well, it's, like, the only allergy that people have that they, like, can, like, dabble. (laughs) Yeah. I think of, like, my friends who are, like, allergic to wheat or are, like, proper gluten-free. Yeah. And, like, they don't even, like, mess around with it. They're, like there was a crumb <laughs> on that plate or yeah. you just ate a slice of pizza i can't kiss you <laughs> right it's like a that intense and the lactose people are like you got any more of those cheese sticks like yes give me like the peeled cheese in my mouth oh let's chase that with whole milk <laughs> featuring two scoops of ben and jerry's ice cream okay oh, yeah. <laughs> 
sorry to the lactose people listening to this podcast. Which is like, uh, un- unless you fully relate to this. Uh, honestly, it's like probably 50% of my podcast listeners. <laughs> I just know. Like, I just, in my heart of hearts, I know that it's most people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna send you a TikTok about lactose people after this, and it's like it's really funny. It's really fucking funny, but it's basically what we're talking about here. It's also like the only allergy people like make fun of. Like that's terrible. <laughs> no, no, Nick. Do you know how many Gen Z people because like peanut allergies are like eradicated? Do you know how many Gen Zs make what? fun of peanut allergies? You know what? This is sorry, side tangent. I was thinking about the other day because I was showering and there was like a bee in my shower. And I was like, imagine figuring out like you were like allergic to bees like like oh look at that yellow little thing and then it like stung me and i died like could you imagine how pissed you would be if this was like 713 bc <laughs> and you died because of a bee sting or like okay same concept like peanuts i was like oh look at this free food on the ground shout out legumes and then i was like i can't be pissed yeah i'm pissed I'm also just annoyed because, yeah, basic, it's not eradicated, but basically they just learned that if you give peanut to kids earlier, like, you can, like, not have them develop an allergy. I don't know. Do you have anyone in your class that you teach that has a peanut allergy? Oh, yeah, I definitely do. Yeah. I mean, that's not, like, something I like, consciously think of, especially this year with COVID. Like, you can't eat in the classroom. So I'm oh, not, really? like, watch those peanut butter and jelly snacks. I mean, I teach high schoolers. True. And... It might be more eradicated for, like, people that are currently in, like, elementary school. But I get ripped on on, like, well, I take offense to them. They're not personally about me. But, like, on TikTok, basically, like, everyone's, like, joking about peanut allergies. I'm like, it's serious, guys. Like, (laughs) (laughs) like I got my EpiPen. Yeah. (laughs) Did I tell you this story? So, similar... I'm just, I'm jumping, I'm using the platform of the EpiPen I just made to make this reference my story. So follow my train of thought here, people. Okay, yeah. So last week I went to get my second COVID shot and the guy took the needle and jabbed my arm and the needle did not go in. Yes. Like it did not enter my skin. And the nurse was like, oh my God, you have tough skin. And my first thought was like, that's the first time <laughs> anybody's ever said that. And my second thought was like, uncomfortable laughing because like what do you mean the needle won't enter my skin i was like it's because like, they do it on your like bicep yeah and, like clearly it's not muscle there preventing that needle from entering right yes so this is very odd so she he had to take the like needle and kind of like jab it in as if it was like an epi pen to get it like through my skin and i was like great so now not only am i protected against covid but i'm also a lizard person (laughs) and i have a bruise on my bicep great 10 out of 10 experience okay like this is disgusting and i was something i never wanted to admit while recording but like the same shit i bet will happen to me (laughs) which is like it's so embarrassing like i don't even want you to look at me right now but like i used to get weekly allergy immunizations in my arms that's probably not the right technical term but like that's what I had to get so my skin is like that too but you can't tell when you're just like touch my arm you can only tell when someone's trying to like inject a subcutaneous injection or whatever the fuck they're called but yeah I'm I'm scared for that I'm cutting all of this. <laughs> like, we've lost... part, minute one to minute 75. Is that what you're <laughs> I release a 20 minute podcast. <laughs> it's just like us talking about Taylor Swift. And then that's it. <laughs> it's us talking about your curling team and then nothing else. I think this is a top notch episode. If somebody makes it to the end, they need to like comment on your socials. Yeah, and I'll send you stuff. I'll send you merch. We did this ride together, people. And it's still going. The ride is still continuing until Tori cuts us off at some point. <laughs> we technically have two things left on our agenda. Are they even worth getting to? I do. I do want to talk about streaming services. Okay, this transition seamless. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck we were talking about before this. Okay, okay, streaming services. I have a bone to pick. Imagine, let's do a little role play here. I'm the person that comes up with streaming services, and I'm like, <clears throat> no, what's like an evil cackle? Like, <laughs> yes. We've got them again. We've got them paying $100 a month for cable TV. (laughs) You fuckers. 
<laughs> you fucking sheeple. So for me, I recently purchased the six-month subscription of HBO Max. Why did I do that? For one singular show. Literally yeah, one they got singular you. show. I was like, okay, well, I read that book. I loved that book. And now I want to watch the TV show for it. But it's like HBO Max. So I buy HBO Max. And it's like, oh, well, you can't just get the free trial because we're releasing one episode a week for the next five weeks. So then it becomes like, okay, well, I have to get the two-month subscription. And guess what? The deal for the six-month subscription is only like $20 more. So I was like, might as well just get the six-month subscription. And now I have HBO Max despite the fact that I finished the TV show. So I'm like, okay, well, what yeah. else nonsense do I have to watch on this? <laughs> Honestly, that's me too, especially with Canadian services because we don't have, I feel like, as much on like Netflix and stuff. And we don't even have Hulu. But it's like, I don't have a TV. I don't own a TV and I don't have cable, but I still pay basically cable prices for streaming services and I still can't find all the TV shows that I want to watch. And the other thing that's obnoxious as hell is like it's not just streaming services for TV. It's like okay Spotify or those like yeah. do you know anybody who uses Pandora Plus? Why is that a nope. streaming service but listen option? to RTBP on Pandora. Sorry, We're there. Sorry to the sponsors. <laughs> But yeah, no, I know. Like I, confession time, I still use a student account on Spotify, even though, oh my God, your face, is that actually bad? No, I mean, given the, like, that's the, the like least thing Tori's admitting to the night tonight, despite the fact that she like steals like eight other people's streaming services out there. Remember when I gave Tori my Apple TV password so that she would watch Ted Lasso and then didn't? Or Tori and I both stealing somebody else's Disney Plus? us to watch folklore that long pond sessions and then me basically outing their password on <laughs> oh, air good times good times i'm just annoyed so i had like a shitty pc up until this summer and then i bought like a beautiful new macbook air so i just refused to like give my laptop like basically cancer by like torrenting yep. and pirating a bunch of tv shows i'm like i will not do what i did to my last laptop and so i'm like i will only get my shit like legitimately and it is ruining my life <laughs> a while ago i'm actually gonna connect this back to the circle i was watching the uk version of the circle and i found like a link out there and i got the link from like a friend who i was like a reliable source so i clicked on the link now i use google chrome because i'm a normal person and i have ad blocker on google chrome because i'm a millennial and i know how this shit works i've been around the block a time or two so when i clicked on the episode it was like crystal clear it was like perfect like i had no issues with it so then i was talking to like one of my like older cousins and i was like hey like we watched circle last year watch the uk version i'll send you a link i sent them a link and you tori do you know what popped up because they watched what? Uh, safari porn it's like great <laughs> now i have sent my older cousin porn and apparently the porn that popped up wasn't even like your average every day like <laughs> porn it was like i think like <laughs> dog costume porn <laughs> <laughs> So, so the next text I get is, should I have Angus, which is the dog, her dog? She's like, should I have my dog around me the next time I click play on this episode? Because there might be something they will enjoy that I will not. And then I was like, uh, so then I had to find another link for them to use. Well, I blamed them because I use Google Chrome and Adblocker and they use Safari. Who is using Safari in 2021? Confession time. This is like my deepest oh, shame. Oh, the Internet Explorer. Honestly, worse. I use Mozilla Firefox. I almost said that, but I was like, that's going to be too dated of a reference at this point. You use Firefox. That is shameful. I... You know what I would do if I, you know that game Never Have I Ever? I could honestly say Never Have I Ever used Mortilla, Motorzola, Firefox. Fog, and my five fingers would still be standing and I would laugh at every person who put a finger down <laughs> I remember I was playing an org and one of my like closest allies said something like who the fuck would ever use me <laughs> I don't even remember what the story was now so like this isn't funny but they were basically just like who the fuck would not use anything like who would use anything other than chrome and I was just like yeah <laughs> Firefox <laughs> Firefox doesn't even sound like a real browser it isn't it basically isn't i see it on my screen right now and it's like so embarrassing i think it's just because like to be honest i was like lazy and like i started with it and i just had all my like bookmarks and then yep, i just like have that little, 
a little orange tail that's like on fire around the globe. <laughs> yeah, okay, it does. Uh, so behind the times. <laughs> honestly, honestly, it is my deepest like that's a good shame. One. Also, if this is not invented and it's not because I've tried, I'm copywriting it right now. This is how you copyright, right? You just say it out yeah, loud. Yeah, it's recorded on a podcast. There should be a website called Where Can I Watch This? And it just lists oh, where website. you can. Every single weekend, I want to watch like fucking What a Girl Wants or like Spice World. And every single time, I'm Googling like 800 million things or i'm like looking at nine different platforms to just find the fucking movie and, and it's, it's annoying so there's so many platforms out there and like all the like good stuff you want to watch is like the like figurehead of all of these platforms so you buy the platform to watch that one show but like the rest of their catalog is like dirt trash absolute trash it's just all bullshit basically but like anyone needs a hey you password which is basically bravo and e entertainment shows hit me up it's the one thing i can share <laughs> it's like get stars or showtime and it's like no as an outlander fan (laughs) as an outlander fan outlander is only on stars um except for netflix got the season a fucking year after it aired Mm -hmm. um the last one it's like yeah you like have to get the stars add-on it's so fucking annoying also just a side note and then we can move on to your school spirit we because it's just us talking now (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so I had CBS All Access because, again, I'm a Survivor fan and wanted to watch fucking season 40 uh, during the pandemic when I stopped going to my friend's house to watch it live. So I, like, was left to my own devices. So I bought CBS All Access. Um, Well, guess what? That turned into Paramount+. Plus. And then Younger, one of my favorite TV shows, was released on Paramount+. Plus. Uh, but CBS knew that I already had an account, so they wouldn't let me create a seven-day free trial account. Which it's like, it's not even the same thing. It's like totally different. So Nick and our other friend Jeff gave me their passwords, but you needed a VPN. They knew that I was in Canada. <laughs> Canada, this fucking sneaky bitches. So I couldn't even watch it until it was added on Prime to today and i just want to say like it's fucking dark Side note, the best show on cbs all access is called why women kill i have probably oh God. watched the premiere episode to this show like eight times and it is not the greatest show out there but it's one of those like mini series it's only 10 episodes long and you get the entire story there is no other series out there that has fulfilled me the way that the finale to this show did. So, like, watch Why Women Kill on Paramount Plus. <laughs> 10 out of 10 viewing experience. Yes, and you have also told me to watch Why Women Kill basically as much as you have Ted And Lasso. guess where it has ended up? It's on my list. <laughs> yeah. It's ended up on my list. It's like, the list is not even real basically like i don't have like a fucking notes app like list or anything it's like but i watched country comfort season one in oh, one like day a month ago, or like a little over a month ago i like got drunk on a saturday and i was at shout out my cousin ben who we mentioned like two hours ago in this podcast <laughs> and i was at um like his place and we like had got home from his sister's place where we were drinking and like for whatever reason, I decided we were going to try to stay awake. And we were like, what should we put on? And I just put on the first episode of Why Women Kill, despite the fact that literally nobody was interested in tr- trying to watch it, except for me. And we watched the entire first episode and then went to bed. And I woke up the next morning and I was like, why did I put on the first episode of Why Women Kill? It's like, I don't think like the three of us were anywhere in the mindset right now. It'll be like watching this like show about like women spurring their lovers. <laughs> Like, why didn't you put on, like, High School Musical, the, the musical, the series? <laughs> but, I mean, if that tells you, like, drunk people even really go for why women kill, because they can trust it. <laughs> and I really should have just put on Ted Lasso, because everybody needs to watch that. It would have been a crowd pleaser. <laughs> it would have only been 30 minutes long. It would have, you know, allowed me to watch Are that. The... Just wait, just wait. Are the episodes 30 yes. minutes long? Uh, 22 minutes running time, or yeah, 30 I've been, minutes? Like, 30 proper. Okay. So you mean I could finish the season in five Probably. hours? And you still <laughs> haven't. Oh my, there's so many things on Apple TV these days. They really try to lurk you in. Yeah, and again, we're hook line The finale episode Ted Lasso is only 33 minutes. 10 Damn. episodes stand between Tori and 
a happiness. <laughs> As a depressed person, I should want to watch this. Get Tori to watch Ted Lasso Challenge. Everybody spam her. Nobody's listening at this point, but if you're still listening, then go spam Tori's the Instagram, the comment section below this Instagram and say, watch Ted Lasso. You know who will be? Just our friend Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nick. Last but not We're least. We're still doing this. Okay. This is it. This is it. Because you know I'm going to edit this podcast down to 20 minutes. <laughs> we, need, we need to backtrack and sp- spend this whole story here. So first of all, I am somebody who hates holidays where I have to put in like just enough effort. And I don't mean like holidays with like big effort because I'm putting in a lot of effort. Like that's fine. But I also hate holidays or I like holidays where I don't have to put in any effort. So like things like the 4th of July, like that's a no effort holiday, which is like an American holiday. But like all I have to do is like wake up and like be existing and it's 4th of July. Like, who can tell me it's not? But holidays like Halloween piss me the ripe fuck off. Because it's like, oh my god, now I need to spend like a week planning my my costume. And then it's like, I never do that. So it's like, okay, well then I just like make up my own costume. And then it's like half-assed. And people are like, why is that your costume? Or like, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you do that? So I've always hated Halloween. And likewise, I've always hated school spirit week. From when I was in high school to now as like a teacher of high school. And it's not not because of like, you know, school spirit. Like I love watching other people be spirited about something that we should all like. I hate having to like plan my outfits around school spirit. Because Tori, when you get up for work, what do you put on to go to work? Nowadays, you don't want to I know. wake up and I say, those jeans are really close to the top of my clean laundry. That. Oh, it's kind of yeah. cold out today. That sweater. Oh, it's kind of warm out today. Uh, that shirt. And it's just like whatever's in like reaching distance. For School Spirit Week, you have to pre-plan or you're like me and you get called out on the first day of School Spirit Week for not trying. And then it's like shame. Like I'm like that person walking around with the shame bell. Like shame, shame. Because it's like I <laughs> half ass School Spirit Week. But it's like, <laughs> guess what? I didn't want to spend my afternoon going to party city and spending like $40 on like dress up stuff. Anyway, school spirit week is something that like makes me very upset. So I had my kids rate my students rate my outfit today, which was like our school colors day. Tori, do you want to guess what they gave me? It was it yep. out of 10? And it wasn't a one. It wasn't that bad. They gave Six? me a 3.5. Oh my God. I was going to say yeah. three. And I was like, what? And I was like, I had tan pants on. So I was like, these are like school color pants. I had this black shirt on just like, and I had a, a gold glitter crown. Are your colors tan and black? No, they're black? gold and black. But I was like berated for not like wearing a tutu or having like yellow everywhere. Like, sorry, I don't own yellow clothes. Yellow is an ugly color for me to be like wearing on my body. Like low key though, I actually understand that. Like, okay, am I the bitch that is wearing like full out school spirit costume? Yes. But I understand that you have to put like effort and like time and money into that. And that's like that's annoying. Not I want to be spending my effort. Like, I, just, I don't want to be like talking about like what am I wearing for school spirit week. But then today I was like, okay, well, I felt bad. So I had to volunteer after school for like this, the event after, which was fine. That was fun. I actually like really enjoyed that. But because I stayed after, I stayed like at work like an hour later than I usually do. So I was like, well, now I need to stop on my way home to get stuff for tomorrow. So I drove all the way to Party City to get stuff. And Tori, I'm going to put on what I bought. It's very small. It's very quick. I want you to explain what I'm wearing and then try to guess what the theme of tomorrow is. Okay, okay. I For some reason, I think it's going to be like pirates or something. I have like zero understanding okay, of this. Okay, get ready. No! <laughs> Nick. Okay, so Nick is just wearing the Kanye West glasses from 2009 that are like, okay, and he's wearing other aviators on his, like, chest. What the fuck? What is tomorrow? A Kanye versus Taylor? (laughs) Like, pick a side day. (laughs) Oh, I regret not buying a big clock and I could have walked in being Flav of Flav. Nick, no one is going to understand that reference except for other teachers. Okay, so he is like pulling down his sunglasses like that's adding to what the clue would be. What Tomorrow is it? Is 2000s day. <laughs> I love how I didn't get that even though like I literally just talked about a 2000s trend that was the Kanye West sunglasses. Do you know what <laughs> like... I was looking for when I went shopping today? Webkins? Don't sell that shit anymore. <laughs> Silly bands? Don't sell that shit anymore. Colored ketchup. 
don't sell that shit anymore. At least, like, like I, I guess, like, I could have, but I didn't. Like, I should have bought, like, a fake snake and been, like, Britney Spears with, like, that giant Ooh. snake. And, like, but, like, for a guy, like, I guess I'll spike my hair up tomorrow. Yes, in, like, a ski a, a jump. Thing, like, a ski jump is a hairstyle. Yeah, we're just, like, straight up the Okay, front. okay. You're right, though. I have no idea what guys' fashion would be. Like, I wasn't paying attention to guys during the 2000s. Well, I was like, okay, like, I don't have any Aeropostale shirts that fit, fit <laughs> me anymore. Or, like, Hollister across my chest. <laughs> I also have this blue and white shirt, which is, like, legitimately one of my favorite shirts. But I feel like it has a somewhat of, like, a 2000s vibe. Everybody who listens to the podcast knows this shirt because I'm pretty sure I've posted a picture with Nick in it. I, like, no, I, but I don't think it's 2000. I thought it was very similar to that, like, paper cup with that green squiggly line, only it's blue and white. I feel like I, my childhood was through the early 2000s, and that alone should carry me through getting points tomorrow for the grade. That's fair. I just feel like for girls, it's like, okay, butterfly hair clips and, like, you're right, Aeropostale and, like, American Or, like, Eagle. your tank top, like, neon green with, like, a white yeah. under spaghetti strap thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%, like, Lizzie McGuire, like, really glossy lips and, like, sparkle eyes. Oh, I also have my first ever cell phone. My first ever cell phone was the Voyager. So it was the first touchscreen phone ever. And it opened to a keyboard. Fuck. So it was a double screen, touch screen on the outside. It also has a two megapixel camera. <laughs> and I have this thick iPod. Are you going to put like wired headphones in? Oh, listen? you know it. That phone is like all I've ever wanted this in phone, life. I'm obsessed. I still have the charger for it. And it's actually like broken, but it still worked back in the day, even when it was broken. And it has a QWERTY keyboard. All I ever wanted was a sidekick when I was in. It high also school. has an antenna for satellite TV. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really fun. Um, I would have been all over that in high school. I was like Miss Team Spirit or whatever. <laughs> Teen Spirit. I don't know. I was kind of going for a Nirvana reference, but I just like flubbed it. Smells major. like Teen Spirit. <laughs> like I would wear those like culottes, like capri well, pants. The other thing I would wear like a backwards hat but i don't have one and the other thing that like what really stands out to me of 2000 fashion is like guys pants sagging jeans yes. like below the butt like boxers yes. out yeah like just and i bieber. can't do that and i feel like no. the other major thing of guys fashion that stands out to me was like the justin bieber haircut and, like i can't the do swoop. that you can't do that you don't think in a day it's too short yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean you haven't been planning for um, Spirit Week for right, several Right, I really months? should have been. But here we are at, you know, the eve of 2000s day. What other days <laughs> are there? Class color day, which is fine. I have like a, we had class color day actually like a month ago. So I have some leftover stuff that I'll just wear for that day. The outfit repeater. Not, like, crap for what I wore that day too. It wasn't enough. Okay. So you're just gonna get you're gonna subject yourself to get getting bullied again? The the principal of my school stopped in my classroom this morning and looked in and he goes, At least I'm dressed better than somebody. <laughs> I was like, this attack. And one of the kids in my class felt bad for me and she was like, Nick, I have gold and black beads. Do you want them? I was like, Is it gonna put me above him? And she was like, Yes. I was like, then yes, give them to me. <laughs> She calls they all you call Nick. Me Nick. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. They don't say Mr. They Drinkwater. Do not at this school, it's all first name. Oh wow, how perfect. Friday is a Disney day, so I'm dressing up with my fellow teachers as one of the seven dwarves. Do you want to see what I have so far? I yeah. have this orange. <laughs> like how you explain? <laughs> I'm just sitting here. Do you know what I look like? I feel like I look like a fortune teller at like <laughs> your. Like Oceanside Tourist Trap Pier, the crystal ball. I see in your future you trimming down this podcast to 20 minutes. <laughs> so anyway, I'm Doc. <laughs> Doesn't have Amy. Doc has glasses, right? What's your moral of the story of Spirit Week? Just you don't fuck with having to try at work? Yes. <laughs> like... Not at work. Not at work. With anything that requires me to pre-plan an outfit i've never been good at it i never will be good at i never want to be good at it to really like bring this full circle it's like full the guys circle? who wear shitty curling pants 
Yeah. You don't want to look like a fucking yeah, hardo. Like a clown. And, right, right. I don't want to be a hardo. I don't want to be like that guy who's like went full out for Spirit Week and then like actually missed the mark. Yeah, I'm sending this pic of you to the group chat, but I'm just scared because I'm going to have to fight people <laughs> off that, yes, I used Mozilla. Right, Tori, let's wrap this podcast up in style. Top three takeaways from the podcast. Seasonal allergies are legitimate, and you should affect people that, like, use that as, like, an excuse or complaint to get out of things. Two, you should watch The Circle because it's really fun, and it's, I feel like, a gateway drug into harder reality TV shows like Survivor and Big Brother. And then the third one is we've all been bamboozled with streaming services, (laughs) and we will always be chumps when it comes to capitalism. So this is how you know that you're the podcast host of this episode because you hit on, like, the major points of what we were supposed to talk about. My three takeaways are (laughs) Tori and Nick severely underestimated the effect of the second drink before recording. Two, (laughs) people who are lactose intolerant don't give a single fuck. And three, Tori uses Motorzilla Firefox. Are we going to get, like, cancelled because of lack? Well, you're the one who said 50% of your listeners were that, so they'll they'll tell us, right? Okay, tell us if we're cancelled. Nick, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Uh, Where can the listeners find you if they want want more? more, If if they want more after three hours, they should check themselves into some type of place of well-being. That's where they should check me out. If they gave up and just fast forwarded to the end you can find me at at drinky 11 on instagram now mind you haven't posted in nearly three years but eventually a photo dump is coming you can find me at nick Drinkwater on twitter and actually hit me up if you want to use my my profile for your future winning season of the circle airing this time 2022 you mean they can use your cabbage yes photos? they can Oh, love that. I thought you were going to say, hit me up if you need access to HBO Max or whatever. Yes, sure, itself. that too. Okay, Nick. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And there you have it. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you so much, Nick, for joining me on the podcast. I'll be recording a new episode this week. So let me know what you want to hear about next. You can follow along with all of the RTBP shenanigans at RTBP Podcast on all social media. And you can leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. This helps the pod find new listeners so they can also join in on the fun. I hope that you are safe and healthy out there. As always, I'm your host, Tori, and I am ready to be petty. See you soon. Bye.